Hi everyone, I am Dr. Muhammad Afiz, Department of Ophthalmology, Kim Scarver. Uh, this is the second part of the aqueous humor dynamics. Here we will be talking about the three mechanisms in the production of aqueous humor or aqueous humor inflow. Okay, the thing which I forgot in the first part is um, uh, some of the important uh, junctions, gap junctions and tight junctions which are present. So tight junction is present in the non-pigmented epithelium. Remember this tight junction is present in non-pigmented epithelium on the lateral aspect. On the lateral aspect near the apex. Understood? This is the apex and this is the... See you remember this one. This pigmented epithelium and uh, non-pigmented epithelium. Pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented are apex to apex configuration. They are present in apex to apex configuration. So the tight junction is present only present at the lateral aspect of the epi apical side of the non-pigmented epithelium. So this forms the this forms the blood aqueous barrier, which prevents the uh, substances from the blood entering to, into the aqueous humor. So remember this this is the tight junction, and one more one more junction will be your gap junction, which is present numerously at the apex of the pigment and non-pigment epithelium which connects these two. This helps in the passive movement from the pigmented epithelium to the non-pigmented uh, non epithelium. So it is numerously present between the uh, apical surfaces of both your pigmented and non-pigmented epithelium and it also present at the lateral aspects of the pigmented epithelium and the lateral aspects of the non-pigmented epithelium. But presence here it is more in numerous and more important and more important for the uh, free flow of the uh, aqueous fluid or ultrafiltrate. Okay, these these two important points I missed in the previous class. Now coming to the mechanism proper. Uh, aqueous humor production mechanism has got three steps, out of which one is the active step. One is the active step. One is the active step and, uh, and two more are the passive steps. The passive steps are nothing but ultrafiltration and diffusion. It accounts for around 30% of the aqueous humor production, ultrafiltration around 20% and diffusion is around 10%. The active step is energy dependent or ATP dependent which is around 70% of the uh, which accounts for 70% of the aqueous humor production. Active, secre active secretion is, by, is, uh, is produced in the non-pigmented epithelium and it is helped by your sodium potassium ATP is mainly this is the most important uh, channel uh, transporter then also an enzyme called as cardium anhydrous 2 ca carbonic carbonic anhydrous 2 activity the ultrafiltration ultrafiltration is uh, uh, produced by hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure the difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the oncotic pressure helps in the ultrafiltration also it is also opposed by IOP. So three pressures are important for the ultrafiltration: hydrostatic pressure, ionic pressure, and IOP pressure, intraocular pressure. All those things mechanism will come. Uh, we'll see in the next slide, coming slides. Okay. Coming to ultrafiltration, as I told you, uh, see, in the stroma, we have capillaries, and the capillary has got uh, fenestrations. Capillary, 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 capillary is not a uh, uh, non-fenestrated thing. It is a fenestrated. Th this is the unusual, uh, 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 unusual thing about these capillaries. It has got penetration, so there is a leaky. It is a leaky. So microprose are present. So ultrafiltrate occurs here. Ultrafiltrate of the plasma, also called as di dialysate in your textbook. It is given as dialysate, dialysate. So it comes out of the capillary, and it collects in the stroma. And the factors which is leading to the capillary ultrafiltrate is one is your colloid uh, hydrostatic pressure, hydro capillary hydrostatic pressure, which helps in the filtration. Then, due to the colloidal uh, substances present in the capillaries, also called as your uh, uh, this colloidal mainly due to protein. This puts a negative pressure which actually imbibes it, ne negative pressure to the outflow of the ultrafiltrate. And of course you have a IOP from the 
I which is putting a negative pressure or opposing pressure or resisting pressure for the free flow of the ultrafiltrate. So the balance between these two causing it in the, in the balance if the hydrostatic pressure increases then the ultrafiltrate occurs. And the, let me tell you this ultrafiltrate is not much of an importance because this net pressure is almost coming to 0, 2 or 1. So not much important. So this is the plasma filtrate which is occurring and it presents a stroma and it is behind the pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented epithelium. Diffusion is a passive movement of the ions based on the charge and concentration gradient. Across the membrane if there is a gradient, a, a, a formation of gradient, concentration gradient or charge gradient, the diffusion can occur. This accounts for only 10% of the equisimer production. This is what we are talking about. This is the pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented epithelium with the stroma and this is the capillaries. This is the capillaries. So capillary hydrostatic pressure, it favors the uh, formation of ultrafiltrate. IOP opposes and also oncotic pressure opposes. Oncotic pressure present inside the colloidal substance present in the, for example, proteins present inside the capillaries exerts a negative pressure. That is your oncotic pressure which opposes the, which restricts the flow of fluid. Okay, so balance between these three pressures should be able to form the ultrafiltrate. This is one more diagram to uh, understand the ultrafiltrate. So th this is the this is the capillary fenestrated capillary, and you have this is the aqueous side and this is the capillary side. And if there is a pressure, that is your hydrostatic pressure, which favors the movement of the fluid, and the presence of protein, all this uh, red color, which which acts as a colloidal substances, which exerts an osmotic pressure which tries to imbibe the fluid so it is the opposite direction and any pressure from the opposite side that is from the aqueous side that is your IOP which will exert on again an opposite or resistance pressure for the ultrafilter formation this, this side is the IOP and this side is your capillary hydrostatic pressure okay coming to the active secretion this is the most important part this is the most important part See, uh, in your basic textbook, they have tried their level best to connect between the ultrafiltrate and the active secretion. But uh, some of the other books, standard books, try to say that the, there is uh, the connection between the ultrafiltrate and the active secretion is not known. Understood? Not known. So we'll try to understand what is active secretion. This is around seventy percent. Seventy percent of the active aqueous humor formation is by ac uh, active secretion. Okay, the basic principle behind the active secretion is the transfer of sodium chloride or solutes. Among all the solutes, sodium chloride is which is most important. The transfer of the sodium chloride from the stroma of the ciliary process to the posterior chamber or the aqueous chamber. This is the most important funda. If you remember this, everything is fine, no problem. And as you all know, sodium chloride and water are like husband and wife. Wherever sodium chloride goes, your water comes there. Whenever you have salt, you should have water. That is the reason. Wherever sodium chloride goes, water passively driven to dilute the sodium chloride. In, a way, in an attempt to dilute the sodium chloride, aqueous humor is formed. So the most important principle would be transfer of the sodium chloride. This transfer of the sodium chloride occurs in three steps. Occurs in three steps. One is from, see for example, this is the... Uh, this is the if this is the stroma this is the stroma and this is the aqueous chamber sodium chloride transfer should be from the stroma to the pigmented epithelium stroma to the pigmented epithelium and then from the pigmented epithelium to the non pigmented epithelium through the numerous gap junction this you should remember that is the importance of gap junctions here then from the from the non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous chamber through the transporters which are very very important transporters uh, the most important transporter being the sodium potassium ATPase. For this reason, ATPase, uh, the uh, non pigmented epithelium is having numerous mitochondria which produces the ATP or the energy required for the sodium potassium ATPase. Then the transfer of the transfer of uh, water uh, water material from the stroma to the pigmented epithelium is not well understood which aquaporins is uh, helping it out but from the non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous chamber is transported by your aquaporins aquaporin p1 and aquaporin 4 these are the two uh, water channels which are helping the water trans uh, water transfer from the non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous chamber now we'll see the uh, 
direct picture. So these are the things happening. This is the stroma. This is the non-pigmented epithelium, and this is the pigmented epithelium, and this is the equus. The sodium chloride should transfer from stroma to the non-pigmented epithelium, from pigmented epithelium to the uh, non-pigmented epithelium, and from non-pigmented epithelium to the equus. So we'll see how it occurs. See, this is the sodium chloride. Uh, before that, you should remember there are two types of transport here. The one is called as antiport. This is antiport, and this is the symport. Remember, antiport here, once uh, sodium, this is a positive ion, is exchanged with the another positive ion, that is your hydrogen ion. And uh, there is a chloride antiport which transfers chloride in, in exchange for the negative charge bicarbonate. Though these, are two, these two are the antiport which is a very important uh, uh, transfer from the stroma to the pigmented epithelium. And this transfer is helped by your carbonic and hydrogen enzyme. What does it do? It will combine the carbonic uh, carbon dioxide and water to form uh, by, uh, carbonic acid, uh, by carb uh, carbonic acid H2 minus 3, which gets split into H plus ion and uh, bicarbonate ion. This H plus ion is uh, uh, exchanged for sodium, entry of sodium and exit of uh, uh, hydrogen ion, and the bicarbonate ion is exchanged for chloride. So, this uh, carbonic anhydrase enzyme indirectly helps the entry of sodium and chloride into the pigment epithelium into the pigmented epithelium in exchange for bicarbonate and hydrogen ion this is one mechanism the second mechanism of sodium chloride entry into the pigmented epithelium is by the symport symport is nothing but uh, all the ions move towards one direction antiport one ion is moving towards one direction the other ion is op uh, moving in the opposite direction it's an anti but in symport the ions are moving towards one direction to maintain the uh, in a, um, electric by maintaining the electrical neutrality so one potassium and one sodium along with two chloride two sodium uh, two chloride enters into the uh, pigmented epithelium this is called a sodium potassium chloride antiport uh, sorry symport understood so water enters here passively which uh, which what uh, porins or what uh, water channel helps here is Poorly understood. Okay. Now coming to the transfer from the pigmented epithelium to non-pigmented, it's very simple. It is because of the presence of numerous gap junctions. As I told you, numerous gap junctions present between the pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented epithelium help the transfer of sodium chloride from pigmented epithelium to the non-pigmented epithelium, along with which water will also transfer. Sodium chloride, wherever sodium chloride is present, water is present. So uh, at the, at the sidetrack, I would like to also mention there is also, as I told you, there is also presence of gap junction between the cells, between the pigmented epithelium and pigmented epithelium and also between the non-pigmented epithelium uh, non-pigmented epithelium. But the presence of gap junctions between the pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented epithelium is more compared to uh, these two. Then also, See here, this is the tight junction I was talking for the blood aqueous barrier formation. This is the tight junction which is between the non-pigmented epithelium and uh, between the two non-pigmented epithelium near the apical side. Near the apical side. Don't forget this one. This is uh, the, this tight junction, also called as tight junction, is also called as zona occludens. Zona occludens, which is present in the lateral aspect of the non-pigmented epithelium. Okay. Now. Uh, one more, uh, now the interesting thing is the sodium chloride transfer uh, so sodium chloride transport from the pigment non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous this is done by your sodium pot uh, sodium potassium atps sodium potassium atps which requires lot uh, ATPs and the ATPs are produced by your mitochondria present in the mitochondria present in your non pigmented epithelium and one important uh, um, inhibitor of uh, Sodium potassium ATPase is your OABIN. You should remember this one. They, they might ask as a question what is the uh, inhibitor of sodium potassium? It, one important inhibitor is your OABIN, not clinical significant. Now, uh, sodium and potassium has been uh, for sodium, uh, sodium potassium ATPase comes out of the uh, this thing, but potassium comes back, potassium comes back through leakage. It, it has got a um, uh, Passive carrier also, which can which can go in either direction. Now coming to the transfer of chloride. Chloride gives uh, two channels. One has got chloride its own channel. This is dependent swelling. If the there is a swelling of the if there is a swelling of NPE, it will stimulate this channel and the chloride can pass through that. But 
see sodium is transported against the remember here sodium is transported against its concentration gradient against its concentration gradient here sodium is higher against its concentration that is the reason you require atp or atps energy is required anything that is active secretion sodium transport sodium from the non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous is a energy dependent or atp dependent uh, transport and it requires atp and it is against the concentration uh, gradient concentration is higher here it lower here from here to here transfer but chloride is not the case chloride requires a concentra uh, concentration gradient so chloride is transported here but if the if the, what if the chloride concentration builds here that is if the chloride concentration builds gets builds here it is taken up by the uh, transporter in exchange for uh, bicarbonate in exchange for bicarbonate it is taken up here so ultimately chloride concentration in the aqueous is not uh, built up because of the reintake so always the chloride goes from the non pigmented epithelium to the aqueous through a concentration gradient uh, but sodium goes through the against the concentration gradient with the help of a sodium potassium atps this is the thing you should remember now as the sodium enters into the aqueous humor water is driven passively driven this water this here the aquaporins are present aquaporin 1 and 4 are present here understood this is how the aqueous humor by and large aqueous humor is produced this is the mechanism active secretion mechanism which is occurring at the uh, non pigmented epithelium this is important side non pigmented epithelium that's all for the active secretion if you have any doubt please uh, you can ask me in the comment section or any corrections please uh, feel free to correct and kindly share and subscribe and click the bell icon for further notification thank you